Chapter 1. A Young Prince Once upon a time, in the heart of Macedonia, there was a grand palace. This palace was home to young Alexander. He was not just a normal boy. He was a prince, the son of King Philip II. The palace was very big. It had many rooms and a large garden. The garden was full of beautiful flowers and tall trees. There was a stable too, with many strong and fast horses. Alexander loved the horses the most. He loved to watch them run and play in the open fields. The palace was always busy. There were servants who cooked and cleaned. There were soldiers who protected the palace. And there were teachers who taught Alexander. They taught him to read, to write, and to fight like a true warrior. Alexander was a happy boy in the palace. He liked to run in the garden. He liked to learn new things from his teachers. And he liked to dream. He dreamed of becoming a great king, like his father. He wanted to be brave and strong. He wanted to protect his people and make them proud. Life in the palace was not always easy for Alexander. He had to learn a lot. He had to work hard. But he was ready. He knew that one day he would be king. And he wanted to be the best king he could be. So he listened to his teachers. He practiced his fighting skills. And every day, he grew a little bit braver, a little bit stronger. This was the start of Alexander's journey. In the palace of Macedonia, he learned the first lessons of life. He learned to dream big. He learned to work hard. And he learned to never give up. These lessons would help him become Alexander the Great, one of the greatest kings the world has ever known. In the grand palace of Macedonia, Alexander was not alone. He had a special teacher. His teacher's name was Aristotle. Aristotle was very smart. He knew a lot about many things. Aristotle taught Alexander many things. He taught him about the world. He taught him about the stars in the sky. He taught him about plants and animals. He also taught him about people and how they should live together in, in peace. Alexander liked Aristotle's lessons. He listened to Aristotle very carefully. He asked many questions. He wanted to know more. He wanted to understand everything. Aristotle's lessons were not easy. They were hard. But Alexander did not give up. He worked hard. He studied every day. He read many books. He wrote many notes. He learned a lot from Aristotle. Aristotle also taught Alexander how to think. He taught him to ask questions. He taught him to find answers. He taught him to think about right and wrong. These lessons were very important. They helped Alexander become a wise king. Alexander was thankful to Aristotle. He knew that Aristotle's lessons were special. They were not just about facts. They were about life. They were about how to be a good person and a good king. Alexander never forgot Aristotle's lessons. He remembered them when he became a king. He remembered them when he fought in battles. He remembered them when he made hard decisions. Aristotle's lessons helped Alexander become great. They helped him become a king that people loved and respected. One day, a large wild horse came to the palace of Macedonia. This horse was strong and fast. He was also very wild. Nobody could ride him. His name was Bucephalus. The king, Alexander's father, wanted to buy Bucephalus, but the horse was too wild. Many men tried to ride him, but they all failed. They were all afraid of Bucephalus. Alexander watched them. He was not afraid. He saw something different in Bucephalus. He saw a strong and brave horse. He saw a horse that could be his friend. So, Alexander made a plan. He spoke to Bucephalus softly. He did not scare him. He did not hurt him. He treated him with respect. He walked slowly towards the horse. He touched him gently. And then he did something amazing. He rode Bucephalus. Everyone was surprised. They could not believe it. How could a young boy ride such a wild horse? But Alexander did it. He showed everyone that he was brave. He showed everyone that he was determined. He showed everyone that he could do great things. From that day, Bucephalus was Alexander's horse. They became good friends. 
They went to many battles together. They were a great team. Bucephalus was not just a horse. He was a symbol of Alexander's courage and determination. The story of Alexander and Bucephalus is a special story. It shows us that nothing is impossible. It shows us that with courage and determination, we can do anything. It shows us that even a wild horse can become a friend. And it shows us that a young prince can become a great king. Chapter 2 The Ascension Alexander's father was King Philip II. He was a strong king. He made Macedonia a powerful country. But one day, something sad happened. King Philip was killed. It was a sad day for Alexander and for Macedonia. The king was going to a wedding. He was happy. He was with his friends. But then, a man attacked him. The man was one of his own bodyguards. He stabbed King Philip. The king could not survive. He died. Alexander was very sad. He loved his father. He missed him a lot. But he was also brave. He knew that he had to be strong. He knew that he had to protect his people. After his father's death, Alexander became the king. He was only twenty years old, but he was ready. He remembered his father's teachings. He remembered Aristotle's lessons, and he remembered his own dreams. He wanted to be a great king. He wanted to make Macedonia even more powerful. But becoming a king was not easy. There were many problems. There were people who did not want him to be king. There were people who wanted to fight him. But Alexander was not afraid. He was ready to face any challenge. The death of King Philip was a sad event. But it was also the start of a new era. It was the start of Alexander's reign. It was the start of his journey to becoming Alexander the Great. Alexander was ready to become a king. He was ready to face any challenge. He was ready to make his dreams come true. After his father's death, Alexander became the king. He was now King Alexander. He was young. He was only twenty years old, but he was ready to be king. As a king, Alexander had many duties. He had to rule the country. He had to protect his people. He had to make many decisions. Some decisions were easy. Some decisions were hard. But Alexander was not afraid. He knew he had to do his best. Being a young king was not easy. Some people did not trust him. They thought he was too young. They thought he could not rule the country. But Alexander showed them that they were wrong. He showed them that he was a good king. Alexander worked hard. He listened to his people. He solved their problems. He made Macedonia stronger. He built new cities. He made new laws. He trained a strong army. The people of Macedonia were happy. They trusted their young king. They were proud of him. Alexander also faced many challenges. There were wars. There were enemies. But Alexander was brave. He led his army. He fought in the battles. He won many victories. He made Macedonia a powerful country. Being a king was not easy. But Alexander did not give up. He faced all the challenges. He worked hard. He was a good king. He made his people proud. He made Macedonia strong. He was truly Alexander the Great. After becoming king, Alexander had a big dream. He wanted to unite Greece. Greece was not one country. It was many small city-states. Each city-state had its own ruler. But Alexander wanted them to be together. He wanted them to be one strong country. Alexander had a plan. He used his strong army. He talked to the rulers of the city-states. He told them about his dream. Some rulers agreed with him. They joined Alexander. They became part of his kingdom. But some rulers did not agree. They did not want to lose their power. They wanted to fight Alexander. Alexander was not afraid. He was ready to fight. He led his army into battles. He fought bravely. He won many victories. One by one, the city-states became part of his kingdom. The people of these city-states became his people. They were now part of a big and strong country. Alexander was happy. He saw his dream come true. Greece was now united. It was one big country.
It was stronger than ever. Alexander was proud. He was proud of his people. He was proud of his army. He was proud of himself. Unifying Greece was a big achievement. It was not easy. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of courage. But Alexander did it. He showed everyone that he was a great king. He showed everyone that dreams can come true. He was truly Alexander the Great, the king who united Greece. Chapter 3. The Persian Campaign After uniting Greece, Alexander had a new dream. He wanted to fight Persia. Persia was a big and powerful country. It was ruled by King Darius. Alexander wanted to defeat him. The first big battle was at a place called Granicus. It was a river in Persia. Alexander and his army had to cross this river to fight the Persians. The Persian army was waiting for them. They were ready to fight. They were on the other side of the river. They had many soldiers. They had many horses. They had many weapons. It was not going to be an easy fight. But Alexander was not afraid. He believed in his dream. He believed in his army. He knew that they could win. So, he led his army across the river. He led them into battle. The Battle of Granicus was a hard battle. Many soldiers fought. Many soldiers died. But in the end, Alexander won. His army was strong. His soldiers were brave. They defeated the Persians. This was a big victory. It was Alexander's first major victory against Persia. It showed everyone that Alexander was a strong king. It showed everyone that his army was a strong army. And it showed everyone that Alexander could achieve his dreams. The Battle of Granicus was just the beginning. There were more battles to come. There were more challenges to face. But Alexander was ready. He was ready to fight. He was ready to win. He was ready to become Alexander the Great, the king who defeated Persia. After the Battle of Granicus, Alexander moved to another place. He went to Egypt. Egypt was also under Persian control. Alexander wanted to free Egypt from Persia. When Alexander reached Egypt, the people were happy. They did not like the Persians. They wanted to be free. They welcomed Alexander. They saw him as a liberator. Alexander treated the people of Egypt with respect. He did not hurt them. He did not steal from them. He wanted to help them. He wanted to make Egypt a better place. With Alexander's help, Egypt became free. The Persians were defeated. The people of Egypt were happy. They were free again. They thanked Alexander. They respected him. They saw him as a good king. In Egypt, Alexander did something special. He founded a new city. He named it Alexandria, after himself. Alexandria was a beautiful city. It was near the sea. It had many buildings. It had many roads. It became a big and important city. The liberation of Egypt was a big success for Alexander. He defeated the Persians. He helped the people of Egypt. He founded a new city. He showed everyone that he was a strong and good king. He showed everyone that he was truly Alexander the Great. On his journey, Alexander reached a place called Gordium. In Gordium, there was a special knot. This knot was very old. It was very complex. It was called the Gordian Knot. A prophecy said that the person who could untie the knot would rule all of Asia. Many people tried to untie it. They tried hard, but they all failed. The knot was too complex. When Alexander saw the knot, he was curious. He wanted to try. He wanted to untie the Gordian knot. Alexander looked at the knot. He tried to untie it, but it was not easy. The knot was very complex. It was very tight. It seemed impossible to untie it. But Alexander did not give up. He thought about the problem. He thought about a solution. Then he had an idea. He took out his sword. With one swift stroke, he cut the knot. The Gordian knot was no longer tied. Alexander had solved the problem. People were amazed. They had never seen such a thing. Alexander had found a different way to solve the problem. He had shown them that sometimes you have to think differently. 
You have to be brave. You have to be bold. The story of the Gordian Knot is a special story. It shows us that problems can be solved in different ways. It shows us that we should not give up. And it shows us that with courage and creativity, anything is possible. Just like Alexander the Great, the king who cut the Gordian Knot. Chapter 4. King of Asia After cutting the Gordian Knot, Alexander moved forward. He was ready for another big battle. This battle was called the Battle of Issus. It was against King Darius of Persia. It was one of Alexander's most important battles. Alexander's army was smaller than the Persian army. But Alexander was not afraid. He had a plan. He had a strategy. Alexander placed his army near the river. The river was at their back. This was a good position. It protected them from attacks. It gave them a chance to fight well. King Darius came with his big army. He saw Alexander's small army. He thought he could win easily. But he was wrong. Alexander was ready to fight. The Battle of Issus was a hard battle. There was a lot of fighting. There was a lot of noise. There was a lot of fear. But Alexander's army was strong. They fought bravely. They did not give up. In the end, Alexander won. He defeated King Darius. He showed everyone that a small army can win against a big army. He showed everyone that strategy is important in a battle. He showed everyone that he was a great king. The Battle of Issus was a big victory for Alexander. It made him more famous. It made him more powerful. It made him the king of Asia. It was a big step in his journey to become Alexander the Great. After the Battle of Issus, King Darius of Persia was afraid. He had lost the battle. He saw how strong Alexander's army was. He saw how brave Alexander was. He knew he could not win. So he made a decision. He decided to run away. King Darius left his army. He left his people. He got on a horse and rode away. He rode fast. He did not look back. He did not stop. He was afraid of Alexander. When Alexander saw this, he was surprised. He did not expect King Darius to run away. But he did not chase him. He had won the battle. He had proved his strength. He did not need to prove anything else. The people of Persia were surprised too. They did not expect their king to run away. They felt lost. They felt afraid. But Alexander calmed them. He told them not to be afraid. He told them that he would be their king now. He told them that he would protect them. King Darius's flight was a big event. It changed many things. It showed everyone that Alexander was a strong king. It showed everyone that he could win against a big and powerful king. It showed everyone that he was ready to be the king of Asia. It was another step in his journey to become Alexander the Great. After the Battle of Issus, Alexander moved to a new place. He went to Babylon. Babylon was a big and beautiful city. It was an important city in Persia. Alexander wanted to go there. When Alexander reached Babylon, he was happy. The people of Babylon welcomed him. They were happy to see him. They knew about his victories. They knew about his bravery. They respected him. They accepted him as their new king. Alexander entered Babylon with his army. They walked through the city gates. They saw the big buildings. They saw the beautiful gardens. They saw the happy people. It was a triumphant entry. It was a proud moment for Alexander. In Babylon, Alexander did many good things. He treated the people with respect. He helped them. He made the city even more beautiful. He made the city even more prosperous. Entering Babylon was a big event for Alexander. It was a symbol of his victory. It was a symbol of his power. It was a symbol of his greatness. The people of Babylon accepted him as their king. They accepted him as the king of Asia. Alexander was truly Alexander the Great. Chapter 5. Onwards to India. After Babylon, Alexander had a new dream. He wanted to go to India. But it was not easy. To reach India, he had to cross a big mountain range. It was called the Hindu Kush. It was a hard and dangerous journey. The mountains were very high. They were covered with snow. The air was thin. 
It was cold. It was hard to breathe. It was hard to walk. It was hard to carry the heavy weapons, but Alexander and his army did not give up. Every day they walked. They climbed. They pushed. They pulled. They helped each other. They faced many difficulties. They faced cold weather. They faced strong winds. They faced dangerous paths. But they did not stop. They kept moving. Crossing the Hindu Kush was a big challenge. It tested their strength. It tested their courage. It tested their determination. But Alexander and his army were strong. They were brave. They were determined. They crossed the Hindu Kush. They'd reached India. The journey was hard. But it was also a lesson. It taught Alexander and his army to be strong. It taught them to be brave. It taught them to never give up. And it brought them closer to their dream. It brought them closer to India. It brought them closer to becoming even greater. After crossing the Hindu Kush, Alexander reached India. In India, there was a powerful king. His name was King Porus. He ruled a big kingdom. He had a big army. Alexander wanted to fight him. Alexander and his army met King Porus and his army on the battlefield. It was a big battle. It was a hard battle. Both armies fought bravely. King Porus was a strong king. He fought well. His army fought well. They did not give up. But Alexander and his army were stronger. They fought harder. They won the battle. The battle with King Porus was a big victory for Alexander. He showed his strength. He showed his bravery. He showed his skill. He won against a powerful king. He won in a new land. He proved that he was a great king. He was truly Alexander the Great. After the battle, Alexander and King Porus talked. Alexander respected King Porus. He admired his bravery. He admired his strength. He let King Porus keep his kingdom. He let him rule his people. The battle with King Porus was an important event. It was a test of strength. It was a test of bravery. It was a test of skill. And Alexander passed the test. He proved that he was a great king. He proved that he was Alexander the Great. After the battle with King Porus, Alexander and his army continued their journey. They'd reached the Bees River. It was a big river. They could go further. They could see more of India. But something happened. Alexander's soldiers were tired. They missed their homes. They wanted to go back. They did not want to go further. They told Alexander about their feelings. Alexander was surprised. He wanted to continue. He wanted to see more of India. But he also cared about his soldiers. He saw their tired faces. He heard their sad voices. He felt their homesickness. So Alexander made a decision. He decided to turn back. He decided to go home. It was a hard decision. But it was the right decision. His soldiers were happy. They thanked Alexander. They respected him even more. The journey to India was over. It was the end of a big adventure. It was the end of a long journey. Alexander and his soldiers turned back. They started their journey home. They carried with them many memories. They carried with them many experiences. They carried with them many lessons. The journey to India showed Alexander and his soldiers many things. It showed them new lands. It showed them new people. It showed them new challenges. And it showed them that even a great king like Alexander cares about his soldiers. It showed them that Alexander is not just a great king. He is also a great leader. He is truly Alexander the Great. Chapter 6 The Return West After deciding to go home, Alexander and his army had to cross a big desert. It was called the Gedrosian Desert. It was a hot and dry place. It was a hard and dangerous journey. The sun was hot. The sand was hot. There was no water. There was no food. The soldiers were tired. They were thirsty. They were hungry. But they had to keep moving. They had to cross the desert. Alexander was with them. He was also tired. He was also thirsty. He was also hungry. But he did not give up. He encouraged his soldiers. 
He told them to be strong. He told them to keep moving. Every day they walked. They walked under the hot sun. They walked on the hot sand. They had no shade. They had no rest. But they did not stop. They kept moving. They wanted to reach the other side of the desert. They wanted to go home. Crossing the Gedrosian Desert was a big challenge. It tested their strength. It tested their courage. It tested their will. But Alexander and his army did not give up. They faced the challenge. They crossed the desert. They showed everyone that they were strong. They showed everyone that they were brave. They showed everyone that they were true soldiers. The Gedrosian Desert was a hard journey. But it was also a lesson. It taught Alexander and his soldiers to be strong. It taught them to be brave. It taught them to never give up. And it brought them one step closer to their home. It brought them one step closer to the end of their journey. After crossing the Gedrosian Desert, Alexander and his army reached Babylon again. Babylon was a big and beautiful city, but it was not the same. It had changed. It needed help. Alexander decided to help. He decided to rebuild Babylon. Alexander and his soldiers worked hard. They cleaned the city. They fixed the buildings. They built new roads. They planted new trees. They made Babylon beautiful again. The people of Babylon were happy. They saw their city become beautiful again. They saw their city become strong again. They thanked Alexander. They respected him. They saw him as a good king. They saw him as a good leader. Rebuilding Babylon was a big task. But Alexander and his soldiers did it. They worked together. They helped each other. They showed everyone that they were not just fighters. They were also builders. They were also helpers. They could do great things. Rebuilding Babylon was a big achievement. It showed Alexander's care for the city. It showed his respect for the people. It showed his ability to do good things. And it showed everyone that Alexander was not just a great king. He was also a great leader. He was truly Alexander the Great. After rebuilding Babylon, Alexander started thinking about the future. He had big plans. He wanted to do more. He wanted to achieve more. He had dreams, and he was ready to make them come true. Alexander wanted to expand his kingdom. He wanted to explore new lands. He wanted to meet new people. He wanted to learn about new cultures. And he wanted to share his own culture. He wanted to share the Greek culture. Alexander believed in the Greek culture. He loved its art. He loved its literature. He loved its philosophy. He thought that the Greek culture was special. He thought that it could help people. He thought that it could make the world a better place. So, Alexander planned to spread the Greek culture. He wanted to build new cities. He wanted to build new schools. He wanted to build new theaters. He wanted to build new libraries. He wanted to teach people about the Greek culture. He wanted to show them its beauty. He wanted to show them its wisdom. Alexander's plans were grand. They were big. They were bold. But Alexander was ready. He was ready to work hard. He was ready to face challenges. He was ready to achieve his dreams. Alexander's plans for the future showed his vision. They showed his courage. They showed his ambition. And they showed everyone that Alexander was not just a great king. He was also a great thinker. He was also a great dreamer. He was truly Alexander the Great. Chapter 7 The Downfall After many battles, after many journeys, things started to change. Alexander's soldiers were not happy. They were tired. They were homesick. They started to question Alexander. They started to rebel. The rebellion started quietly. Some soldiers talked. Some soldiers argued. Some soldiers refused to follow orders. They missed their families. They missed their homes. They wanted to go back. Alexander saw this. He was worried. He did not want a rebellion. He did not want his soldiers to be unhappy. He cared about his soldiers. They were his friends. They were his comrades. They were his family. So Alexander decided to talk to his soldiers. He gathered them. He spoke to them. He told them about his dreams. 
He told them about his plans. He told them that they were important. He told them that they were part of his dreams. He told them that he needed them. Alexander's speech was powerful. It was passionate. It was sincere. It touched the hearts of his soldiers. They listened to Alexander. They understood him. They remembered their loyalty. They remembered their friendship. They remembered their king. The rebellion was over. The soldiers decided to follow Alexander. They decided to support him. They decided to believe in his dreams. It was a hard time. But it was also a special time. It showed Alexander's leadership. It showed his courage. It showed his love for his soldiers. And it showed everyone that Alexander was not just a great king. He was also a great leader. He was truly Alexander the Great. After the rebellion, another problem came. It was a plot against Alexander. Some of his own pages, the young boys who served him, were planning to kill him. It was a shock. It was a threat. It was a conspiracy. Alexander learned about the plot. One of his trusted men told him. Alexander was surprised. He was hurt. He could not believe it. His own pages, his own servants were against him. But he had to face it. He had to stop it. Alexander called his guards. He told them about the plot. He told them to find the pages. He told them to arrest them. He wanted to know the truth. He wanted to stop the plot. He wanted to save himself. The guards found the pages. They arrested them. They brought them to Alexander. Alexander talked to them. He asked them about the plot. He asked them why they wanted to kill him. The pages were afraid. They told Alexander everything. They told him about their plan. They told him about their reasons. Alexander was sad. But he was also a king. He had to protect his kingdom. He had to protect himself. So he made a decision. He decided to punish the pages. They were guilty. They were traitors. They had to pay for their actions. The conspiracy of the pages was a sad event. It was a hard time for Alexander. But it was also a test. It tested his leadership. It tested his courage. It tested his wisdom. And Alexander passed the test. He showed everyone that he was a strong king. He showed everyone that he was a wise king. He showed everyone that he could face any challenge. He was truly Alexander the Great. After the conspiracy, another problem came. Alexander became sick. He was very sick. He could not get out of bed. He could not eat. He could not talk. It was a hard time. It was a sad time. His soldiers were worried. They saw their king in bed. They saw their king in pain. They did not know what to do. They felt helpless. They felt sad. They felt scared. They prayed for Alexander. They wished for his recovery. They hoped for a miracle. Alexander was also worried. He felt the pain. He felt the weakness. But he also felt the fear. He was afraid of dying. He was afraid of leaving his kingdom. He was afraid of leaving his soldiers. But he tried to be strong. He tried to fight the illness. Days passed. Weeks passed. Alexander did not get better. He got worse. His body became weaker. His face became paler. His eyes became dimmer. He was dying. Everyone knew it. Everyone felt it. The despair among his followers was great. They saw their king dying. They felt their hearts breaking. They could not believe it. They did not want to accept it. But they could not do anything. They could only watch. They could only wait. They could only hope. Alexander's illness was a tragedy. It was a test. It tested his strength. It tested his courage. It tested his will. But it also tested his followers. It tested their loyalty. It tested their love. It tested their hope. And they all passed the test. They showed everyone that they were not just followers. They were true friends. They were true comrades. They were true believers in Alexander the Great. Chapter 8 The Death of Alexander One day, Alexander felt very sick. He had a high fever. He was very weak. 
He was in pain. It was not a normal sickness. It was a fatal fever. It was a mystery. Nobody knew what it was. Nobody knew how to cure it. Alexander's doctors tried to help him. They gave him medicine. They tried to cool his fever, but nothing worked. Alexander's fever did not go down. It went up. He became weaker. He became sicker. Alexander's soldiers were worried. They saw their king in pain. They saw him suffering. They could not do anything. They felt helpless. They felt scared. They prayed for him. They hoped for a miracle. The fever was strong. It was powerful. It was deadly. It was like an enemy. An enemy that Alexander could not fight. An enemy that he could not defeat. It was winning. It was killing Alexander. The fatal fever was a big mystery. It was a big challenge. It tested Alexander's strength. It tested his courage. It tested his will. And it tested his soldiers' faith. It showed everyone that even a great king like Alexander could be defeated. Even a great king like Alexander could fall. Even a great king like Alexander could die. It was a sad truth. It was a hard reality. It was the end of Alexander the Great. As the fever got worse, Alexander knew that he was dying. He could feel it. He was very weak. He could barely speak. But he had something to say. He had his last words to share. Alexander called his closest friends. He called his loyal generals. They came to him. They saw their king in his bed. They saw him weak. They saw him dying. But they also saw him strong. They also saw him brave. They saw him as Alexander the Great. In a weak voice, Alexander spoke. He spoke about his dreams. He spoke about his plans. He spoke about his love for his soldiers. His words were full of emotion. They were full of wisdom. They were full of courage. Then, Alexander spoke about his successor. He knew he was dying. He knew he had to choose a new king. But his words were unclear. He said, to the strongest. Nobody knew what he meant. Did he mean his strongest general? Did he mean his strongest soldier? Did he mean his strongest friend? It was a mystery. It was an unanswered question. Alexander's last words were powerful. They were meaningful. They were mysterious. They showed his wisdom. They showed his courage. They showed his love for his kingdom. And they showed everyone that even in his last moments, Alexander was a great king. He was a great leader. He was a great man. He was truly Alexander the Great. Finally, the day came. The day that everyone feared. The day that everyone did not want to believe. Alexander the Great, the strong king, the brave soldier, the wise leader, died. It was a sad day. It was the end of an era. News of Alexander's death spread quickly. It spread through his kingdom. It reached every city, every village, every soldier, every citizen. Everyone felt the pain. Everyone felt the loss. It was like a big shadow had fallen over the kingdom. His soldiers cried. They remembered their king. They remembered their leader. They remembered their friend. They remembered the battles they fought together. They remembered the victories they won together. They remembered the dreams they shared together. People in his kingdom cried too. They remembered Alexander as a great king. They remembered his kindness. They remembered his wisdom. They remembered his courage. They remembered the peace and prosperity he brought to them. Alexander was gone, but his spirit was not. It lived in the hearts of his soldiers. It lived in the hearts of his people. It lived in the memories of his victories, his challenges, his dreams, his plans, and his love for his kingdom. The death of Alexander was the end of an era. It was the end of his rule. But it was also the beginning of his legend. It was the beginning of the story of Alexander the Great, the king who conquered the world, the king who dreamed big, and the king who loved his people. Even in death, Alexander was still great. He was still Alexander the Great. Chapter 9 The Successor Wars After Alexander's death, 
The kingdom was in shock. The king was gone. The leader was gone. The friend was gone. But the kingdom was still there. And it needed a new king. It needed a new leader. Many generals wanted to be the new king. They all thought they were the strongest. They all thought they could rule the kingdom. They all thought they could be like Alexander. But it was not easy. It was a struggle. It was a struggle for power. The kingdom was in chaos. There were arguments. There were fights. There were wars. Everyone wanted to be the king. Everyone wanted to have the power. Everyone wanted to rule the kingdom. But nobody could agree. Nobody could decide. Nobody could stop the chaos. The struggle for power was a hard time. It was a time of confusion. It was a time of fear. It was a time of war. But it was also a time of change. It was a time of growth. It was a time of new beginnings. The chaos showed that Alexander was not just a king. He was a great king. He was a great leader. He was a great man. And without him, the kingdom was lost. Without him, the kingdom was in chaos. Without him, the kingdom was in struggle. The struggle for power was a reminder. It was a reminder of Alexander's greatness. It was a reminder of his leadership. It was a reminder of his power. Eve. After a long struggle for power, the generals made a decision. They could not agree on who should be the new king. They could not stop the chaos. They could not stop the wars. So they decided to divide the empire. They decided to rule different parts of it. Alexander's empire was big. It was vast. It had many cities. It had many people. It had many cultures. The generals divided it among themselves. Each general took a part of the empire. Each general became a ruler of that part. This division was not easy. It was not fair. Some generals were not happy. Some generals wanted more. Some generals wanted less. But they all agreed on one thing. They all agreed to keep the peace. They all agreed to stop the chaos. They all agreed to stop the wars. The division of the empire was a big event. It was a big change. It showed the power of Alexander's empire. It showed the influence of his rule. It showed the impact of his leadership. And it showed everyone that even after his death, Alexander was still a great king. He was still a great leader. His empire was still great. His influence was still great. His impact was still great. Even in division, Alexander was still great. He was still Alexander the Great. After Alexander's death and the division of his empire, things changed. The empire was not the same. It was different. It was divided. It was ruled by different generals. But it was still Alexander's empire. It was still his legacy. The cities of the empire grew. They became bigger. They became richer. They became more beautiful. The people of the empire learned. They learned about Greek culture. They learned about Greek philosophy. They learned about Greek art. Alexander's dream came true. His culture spread. His wisdom spread. His legacy spread. But not everything was good. There were fights. There were wars. There were disagreements. The generals did not always agree. They did not always live in peace. They did not always follow Alexander's way. But they always remembered him. They always respected him. They always admired him. Alexander's memory was alive. His spirit was alive. His legacy was alive. Alexander's empire changed after his death. But his legacy did not. His dreams lived on. His ideas lived on. His spirit lived on. Alexander's empire was not just a place. It was a symbol. It was a symbol of his greatness. It was a symbol of his dreams. It was a symbol of his legacy. Alexander may have died, but his legacy lived on. His legacy was still great. He was still Alexander the Great. Chapter 10. Alexander's Influence When Alexander was alive, he had a dream. He dreamed about spreading Greek culture. He dreamed about sharing Greek ideas. He dreamed about uniting different people. Even though he died, his dream lived on. It became real. 
it became the Hellenistic Age. In the Hellenistic Age, Greek culture spread. It spread to many cities. It spread to many people. It changed their lives. They started to speak Greek. They started to read Greek books. They started to learn Greek philosophy. They started to enjoy Greek art. They learned about Socrates. They learned about his wisdom. They learned about his ideas. They learned to think. They learned to question. They learned to seek truth. They learned about Homer. They learned about his epics. They learned about his heroes. They learned about courage. They learned about honor. They learned about adventure. They learned about Greek gods. They learned about their stories. They learned about their powers. They learned about their lessons. They learned about fate. They learned about destiny. The Hellenistic Age was a time of learning. It was a time of growth. It was a time of change. It was Alexander's dream. It was his influence. It was his legacy. Alexander may have died, but his dream lived on. His influence lived on. His legacy lived on. Even in death, Alexander was still great. He was still Alexander the Great. People remember Alexander in different ways. Some see him as a hero. Some see him as a villain. Both views are part of his legacy. To some, Alexander was a hero. He was brave. He was strong. He was a great king. He conquered many lands. He won many battles. He built a big empire. He spread Greek culture. He united different people. He dreamed big dreams. He achieved big things. He inspired many people. They remember him with respect. They remember him with admiration. But to others, Alexander was a villain. He was a warrior. He was a conqueror. He fought many wars. He caused many deaths. He destroyed many cities. He forced his culture on other people. He ruled with power. He ruled with force. He did not always listen. He did not always understand. They remember him with fear. They remember him with anger. Alexander's legacy is complex. It has light. It has shadow. It has heroism. It has villainy. It is a mix of good and bad. It is a mix of right and wrong. It is a mix of respect and fear. Alexander was a great man, but he was also a human. He had strengths. He had weaknesses. He made good choices. He made bad choices. He brought peace. He brought war. He brought knowledge. He brought chaos. The view of Alexander as a hero or a villain depends on how you look at him. It depends on what you focus on. It depends on what you value. But one thing is clear. Alexander had a big impact. He changed the world. He left a big legacy. He will always be remembered. He will always be Alexander the Great. Even though Alexander lived long ago, his impact is still felt today. We can see his influence in our modern culture and society. He is not forgotten. He is remembered. He is still part of our world. In our books, we read about Alexander. We learn about his life. We learn about his battles. We learn about his dreams. We learn about his legacy. We are inspired by his courage. We are inspired by his ambition. We are inspired by his leadership. In our movies, we see Alexander. We see his adventures. We see his challenges. We see his victories. We feel his passion. We feel his determination. We feel his spirit. In our museums, we find Alexander. We find his art. We find his coins. We find his statues. We see his face. We see his image. We see his symbol. In our language, we use Alexander's name. We use it to describe a great leader. We use it to describe a brave warrior. We use it to describe a big dreamer. Alexander's name is a symbol. It is a symbol of greatness. It is a symbol of courage. It is a symbol of ambition. Alexander's influence is everywhere. It is in our books. It is in our movies. It is in our museums. It is in our language. It is in our thoughts. It is in our dreams. It is in our hearts. 
Alexander may have lived long ago, but his memory is still alive. His legacy is still alive. His influence is still alive. In our modern world, Alexander is still great. He is still Alexander the Great. Chapter 11 Myths and Legends There are many stories about Alexander. Some of them are true. Some of them are not. Some of them are myths. Some of them are legends. One of the most famous stories is about Alexander as a godlike king. In this story, Alexander is not just a king. He is more than a king. He is a god, or at least a demigod. He is the son of a god. He has special powers. He can do things that other people cannot do. Alexander was strong. He was brave. He was smart. He could fight great battles. He could win great victories. He could lead a big empire. He could make big decisions. He could solve big problems. He was like a god. People believed this story. They saw Alexander's greatness. They saw his power. They saw his achievements. They could not believe that he was just a man. They believed that he was a god, or at least a demigod. The story of Alexander as a godlike king is a myth. It is a legend. It is not true. But it is a powerful story. It shows how people admired Alexander. It shows how people respected him. It shows how people saw him. In their eyes, Alexander was not just a great king. He was a godlike king. He was more than a man. He was Alexander the Great. Another famous story about Alexander is about his search for immortality. This is the legend of the Fountain of Youth. In this story, Alexander goes on a great adventure. He travels far and wide. He crosses mountains and deserts. He sails seas and rivers. He is looking for something. He is looking for the Fountain of Youth. The Fountain of Youth is a special place. It is a magic place. It has a magic water. Anyone who drinks this water becomes young again. Anyone who drinks this water lives forever. Alexander wants this. He wants to live forever. He wants to be immortal. Alexander faces many challenges. He fights monsters. He solves riddles. He overcomes obstacles. But he never gives up. He keeps going. He keeps searching. He believes in the fountain of youth. He believes in immortality. But in the end, Alexander does not find the fountain of youth. He does not become immortal. He remains a man. He remains mortal. He grows old. He gets sick. He dies. But his dream lives on. His legend lives on. His story lives on. The legend of the fountain of youth is a powerful story. It shows Alexander's courage. It shows his determination. It shows his dream. Even though he did not find the fountain of youth, he found something else. He found a place in our hearts. He found a place in our stories. He found a place in our legends. He is not immortal. But his memory is. His legacy is. His legend is. He is still Alexander the Great. Alexander's life was full of adventure. He traveled to many places. He fought in many battles. He met many people. And he fell in love. These are the legends of Alexander's love life and adventures. One of the most famous stories is about his love for Roxana. Roxana was a beautiful princess. She was from a land that Alexander conquered. When he saw her, he fell in love. He was the great king. She was the beautiful princess. It was a perfect love story. Alexander and Roxana got married. They had a son. They were happy. They loved each other. They cared for each other. They were a great king and a beautiful queen. They were a powerful couple. But their love story was not always happy. They had challenges. They had problems. They had disagreements. But they always found a way. They always found a solution. They always found love. Their love story is a legend. It is a beautiful legend. It is a powerful legend. Along with his love life, Alexander had many adventures. He went on great journeys. He discovered new places. He met strange creatures. He faced dangerous challenges. He lived a life full of excitement. 
He lived a life full of danger. He lived a life full of adventure. The legends of Alexander's love life and adventures are fascinating. They show us a different side of him. They show us his heart. They show us his spirit. They show us his courage. They make us love him. They make us admire him. They make us remember him. In our hearts, in our stories, in our legends, Alexander is still great. He is still Alexander the Great. Chapter 12. Revisiting Alexander. Today, many years after Alexander's death, we still talk about him. We still study him. We still learn from him. We look back at his life. We look back at his rule. We look back at his influence. We have different perspectives. We have different views. We have different opinions. These are our historical reflections on Alexander. Some historians say Alexander was a great king. He was a great leader. He was a great warrior. He brought peace. He brought order. He brought knowledge. He created a big empire. He spread Greek culture. He changed the world. These historians admire Alexander. They respect him. They see him as a hero. Other historians say Alexander was a tyrant. He was a conqueror. He was a destroyer. He caused wars. He caused deaths. He forced his culture on other people. He ruled with power. He ruled with fear. These historians criticize Alexander. They question him. They see him as a villain. These different perspectives are important. They help us understand Alexander. They help us understand his time. They help us understand his impact. They help us understand ourselves. They help us understand our world. Alexander was a complex man. He had strengths. He had weaknesses. He did good things. He did bad things. He made history. He became a legend. He became Alexander the Great. And in our historical reflections, we revisit him. We learn from him. We remember him. We honor him. Alexander is still great. He is still Alexander the Great. Alexander's story is told in many ways. One of the most popular ways is through art and literature. He is painted in pictures. He is sculpted in statues. He is written in books. He is shown in plays. He is a hero in many stories. In paintings, we see Alexander in battle. He is brave. He is strong. He is leading his soldiers. He is fighting his enemies. He is winning his wars. In statues, we see Alexander as a king. He is noble. He is powerful. He is standing tall. He is holding his sword. He is wearing his crown. In books, we read about Alexander's life. We read about his dreams. We read about his challenges. We read about his victories. We read about his love. We read about his death. We learn about his wisdom. We learn about his courage. We learn about his ambition. In plays, we watch Alexander's story. We watch his journey. We watch his battles. We watch his love. We watch his death. We feel his passion. We feel his determination. We feel his spirit. Through art and literature, we see Alexander. We see his greatness. We see his humanity. We see his legacy. We remember him. We admire him. We honor him. Alexander is not just a king. He is an inspiration. He is a symbol. He is a legend. He is Alexander the Great. Alexander lived long ago, but his influence is still felt today. His story is still told. His lessons are still learned. His legacy is still remembered. We see his influence in our culture. We see it in our history. We see it in our art. We see it in our literature. We see it in our values. We see it in our dreams. We learn from his wisdom. We learn about leadership. We learn about courage. We learn about ambition. We learn about the importance of dreams. We learn about the power of action. We remember his legacy. We remember his victories. We remember his challenges. We remember his love. We remember his death. We remember his spirit. Alexander's influence today is strong. It is powerful.
It is inspiring. It shows us that a man can change the world. It shows us that a dream can become reality. It shows us that a legacy can live forever. Alexander is not just a king. He is not just a legend. He is a guide. He is a teacher. He is an inspiration. He is Alexander the Great.